Hi, welcome everyone. This is Yoan, and in this episode, I would love to share this fun little crossbody bag project with you. Um, this project is a request from Carla, so I'm gonna quote you a little bit of what Carla wrote to me. I was wondering if you could do a tutorial combining improv and a crossbody bag, maybe the outside pocket being quilt as you go improv, the same as you did in the tea time video. I'm not even sure if it's possible, but thought I would ask. What I understand from your email is you wanted the quilt as you go improv piecing for the front pocket of the bag and that's exactly what I did. If you are new in the sewing or quilting world and you don't understand much of the lingos just yet, improv piecing means literally what it is, which is piecing a patchwork in the spontaneous way or improvised way without much of um, precise cutting or measuring, which will give you a one-of-a-kind result. The finished measurements of this bag is approximately 11 and a half inches wide by 10 and a half inches tall and the depth is about one and a half inch. And there is a zipper opening here a couple of slip pockets and a zipper pocket inside as well. I love the size. It's not too large yet it's not too small either. So enough to bring your essentials. So this is a great bag for your daily adventure. Really you can take this anywhere you want for daily errands or a little shopping or maybe just out taking your dog for a walk. So it's really, really functional. The construction of this bag is also relatively simple. So it is great if you are a confident beginner and it will make a relatively quick project if you are an experienced bag maker. As usual, I included all the measurements in the video and you may also download the cutting diagram and the brief written instructions on PDF format. The link is in the description box down below. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. For the front exterior pocket, you want to gather some of your favorite fabric scraps and you will also need a fat quarter for the exterior pieces. Cut up a piece of batting measuring 13 by 7 inches. Now let's work on the patchwork for the pocket. So I'm gonna start with this red fabric. However, I think this is a little too big to be my starting point. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors and make a random cut just like that. I think this little triangular piece is great. Now I'm gonna place this right on the center of my batting. Now I'm gonna grab another fabric similar in size. I think this one is great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay this piece on the right side of the red fabric, aligning one of the edges, just like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and sew this with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. With this walking foot, I'm gauging my quarter of an inch of seam allowance from this little hole here, if you can see. That will give me a quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Alternatively, you can also use quarter of an inch foot or regular presser foot should be okay as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finger press this and then quilt one more time about quarter of an inch from the seams. Next, I'm gonna use this fabric. However, since this is quite large, I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors and cut it in a smaller piece. And I'm gonna sew this piece to this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay them right side together, aligning the edges, and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now I'm gonna finger press this and quilt one more time. Now feel free to add more quilting lines or use decorative stitches if you wanna add more interesting texture to your fabric. Next I'm gonna use this fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in a smaller piece. I decided to use only four different fabrics that I'm going to alternate. However, feel free to use more or less varieties as desired. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this piece to this side. Now, as you continue building the block, it may get a little harder to align the edges since we use wonky pieces. In this case, you wanna use the edges of the top fabric as the gauge. Thank you. 
All right, so this is how my patchwork look like so far. Now I'm going to trim off a little bit of excess here. All right, now let's go ahead and grab another fabric. And basically you want to keep sewing and build the block until the entire batting is covered. Now if you could manage to trim off any excess fabric, that's great. If you can't, due to all the seams, it's fine, just leave it that way. Now when you get to the very uneven edges, like this one here, you want to make sure when you lay out your fabric, it will cover the innermost edges. For example, if I lay out my fabric right here and then I sew this, I will end up with a hole in the center. And in this case, you want to try to avoid light colored fabric like solid white or something to avoid the underneath overlap showing through to the right side of your fabric. All right, here is my progress so far. So I'm just gonna keep going until the entire batting is filled in with the fabric. Once you've done sewing your fabric on the batting, go ahead and trim off all the excess fabric. So I'm gonna flip this to the wrong side and then trim all the excess. Alright, so this fabric should end up measuring 13 inch by 7 inch. Next, go ahead and prepare the exterior pieces. You will also need to cut two pieces of fusible fleece half an inch smaller all around and then go ahead and fuse them to the wrong side of your exterior pieces. Now take the front pocket lining piece. We're gonna first determine the placement of the magnetic snap closure. Measure one and a half inch down from the top center of the lining piece and then place a little mark there with your fabric marker. Now cut the small scrap of fusible fleece and then you want to fuse that to the wrong side of your lining around the same spot as the one and a half inch point mark. Now take the washer and position that right on the one and a half inch point mark. Align the center hole with the one and a half inch point mark. Now go ahead and trace the two side holes with your disappearing fabric marker. Now I'm going to use my seam ripper to cut through the two side lines that I just traced. Just be careful not to overdo it though. Now we're going to attach the male magnetic snap. So go ahead and insert the prongs into the holes. Now place the washer over the prongs just like that. And then you can go ahead and push the prongs either towards the center or towards the side like I do here. You may also use pliers so you won't hurt your thumbs. Now go ahead and lay your lining wrong side up and then lay the pocket piece wrong side down just like so. You can secure them in place with some sewing clips. Grab a little bit of binding strips. So you can either use bias binding like I do here, or you can also use quilt binding strips. And then go ahead and bind the top and the bottom edges with your favorite binding method. The binding that I use here is the half an inch wide double fold bias binding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open the fold, align the edges, and then stitch along the crease line. Alright, now I'm going to fold the binding towards the lining and then finish it with slip stitches. Now I'm going to trim off the excess binding and repeat the same for the bottom edges. Now take the front exterior piece and then lay your pocket piece wrong side down just like so, about two and a half inch down from the top. 
And then you want to mark the position of the male magnetic snap where the hook is sitting. We do this to determine the placement of the female magnetic snap. Now go ahead and install the female magnetic snap right on the mark that you just placed exactly the same way as we did the male magnetic snap. Now go ahead and place the pocket on the right side of the front exterior matching the magnetic snap closure. You may secure the sides with some sewing clips and then go ahead and base stitch the sides with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and then stitch in the ditch along the bottom pocket right on the binding seams. All right, so the front pocket is done. Now let's move on and work on the lining. So go ahead and prepare your lining pieces. Now we're gonna work on the slip pockets. So go ahead and lay your pocket piece right side up and fold that in half, and then stitch along the edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. And once you've done that, go ahead and press the seams open. Now turn the pocket piece right side out and then press. Then top stitch along the top edges. Now position the pocket on the right side of one of the lining piece, about 3 inches down from the top. Now go ahead and draw the seam line to divide the pocket into two. So go ahead and draw just like shown on the screen right now. So you want to draw two vertical lines right on the center about quarter of an inch apart. Now I'm going to go ahead and pin them in place and then I'm going to go ahead and sew starting from the side to the bottom and then go up following my mark lines and then back to the bottom and go to the side. Now if you want to add the zipper pocket for your bag, this is the time to do that. Obviously this is something that I've shown so many times in different videos. So I'm going to refer you to the quilt as you go back tutorial and you may follow exactly the steps and the measurements of the zipper pocket there. So you can go ahead and click the link that pop on the screen right now and I will also include that on the description box and on the comment section below as well. Now let's prepare the zipper closure. So for this project, I'm using 12 inch long zipper, which means the length of the zipper teeth is 12 inches long, while the length of the entire zipper is 13 and a half inch. Trim the zipper so that the entire zipper will measure 11 inches. So what I did here, I simply get rid of those metal zipper stops, both the start and the end of the zipper. Here I've already trimmed my zipper so it is now measuring 11 inches long from the start to the end. Now let's prepare the zipper tabs. So you will need to cut two tiny rectangles measuring 2 inch by 1.5 inch. Fold the short ends towards the wrong side about quarter of an inch and then press. And then fold this in half again, meeting the folded edges together and then press. Now place the zipper tabs to both ends of the zipper. So you want to insert the end of the zipper into the fold of the zipper tab all the way in and then pin or clip them in place. Repeat the same to the opposite end. Now go ahead and stitch both edges of the zipper tab with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance.
Here I've already sewn my zipper tabs. Now you can trim off the excess zipper tabs. Again, you want to make sure that the entire zipper is now measuring 11 inches long. Lay the front exterior piece right side up and then lay the zipper right side down. Center the position of the zipper. There should be half an inch gap on both sides. Now take the front lining piece and lay that right side down. Secure the sandwich with some sewing clips and then go ahead and stitch with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now open the sandwich and press the seams, both the front and the exterior, and then go ahead and top stitch with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Now lay the back exterior piece right side up. Please ignore the strap anchors. When I saw them, I completely forgot to attach the D-rings. And yes, it did happen. So let's talk about strap anchors later. Now lay the zipper right side down. Again, you want to make sure that the position of the zipper is centered with half an inch gap on each side. And then lay the back lining piece right side down. Secure them in place with some sewing clips and then go ahead and sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now open the sandwich, press the seams and then top stitch. Now let's work on the strap anchors. As I mentioned earlier, I made a mistake by forgetting to attach the D-rings. Anyways, so for the strap anchors, you will need to cut from the webbing straps two strips measuring two and a half inches long. And for this project, we will use one inch wide webbing strap. Now go ahead and feed the strap anchor through the D-rings just like that. Position that on the side edge an inch down from the zipper seams. Now go ahead and use a sewing clip to secure them in place. Repeat the same to the opposite side. You may also attach the strap anchors before installing the zipper closure, so suit yourself. Now when you attach the strap anchors, just make sure that the lining is out of the way. So only attach the strap anchors on the exterior fabric. Now go ahead and baste stitch with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. To make the adjustable strap, cut the webbing strap somewhere between 50 and 60 inches long. I cut mine 55 inches long. If you need the tutorial on how to install the hardware making the adjustable strap, I'm going to refer you to the part of the laptop back tutorial where I demonstrated how to make this adjustable strap with webbing. So go ahead and check that out. The link is in the comment section and description box down below. Now separate the exterior fabrics from the lining, just like that, and then secure them in place with some sewing clips, starting by matching the zipper seams. And at this point, make sure to unzip your zipper at least halfway. Now we're gonna sew this all around, however, leave about 4 to 5 inches of opening at the bottom of your lining. And when you sew, you want to start from the center or where the zipper seams are. I'm going to start sewing the exterior shell first. I position my needle right on the zipper seams by the zipper tab. So not on the zipper tab. Just make sure that you are not sewing through the zipper tabs. Sew with half an inch of seam allowance. And once I got to the bottom corner, I'm going to stop and flip this to the opposite side and start sewing again from the zipper seams. Now I'm going to repeat the same with the lining. Here I've already sewn my back and here is the opening hole. Next we're gonna create a little bit of depth to this bag. So go ahead and open up the corner 
meeting the bottom seams with the side seams, just like that. From the corner here, you want to measure three and a quarter of an inch, and then draw a line, just like that, and then go ahead and stitch right on that line. And then repeat the same for all the corners. Now go ahead and trim off all the excess fabric, just be careful not to cut through the stitches. Now let's turn the back inside out through the opening hole. Poke the corner of the zipper with your finger, it should be easily come out now. Now you can pull the lining out, fold the raw edges towards the wrong side, about half an inch, and then stitch along the edges. Attach the adjustable strap, and voila, your bag is done. And that's about it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting projects. Goodbye!